What is going on guys, it's your boy coming to you once again with some three-dimensional anatomy courtesy of anatomylearning.com Today we're going to be looking at the muscles of the medial thigh The first thing you're probably going to want to notice is that most of these muscles, actually all of these muscles, originate on the pelvis and actually cross the pelvic joint which means that they're probably going to have some sort of action on the pelvic joint there are five of these muscles and four out of the five insert onto the thigh meaning that they will only have some action on the hip joint however there's one exception to this which is this muscle right here which inserts onto the tibia meaning that it probably and it actually does have some action on the knee joint as well now i'm going to start with the or primary action of these muscles because it's actually probably pretty easy to figure out if you observe that these muscles originate sort of closer to the midline and then insert onto the femur um, a little bit more laterally you can imagine that if these muscles contract it would actually pull the femur towards the body it pulls they pull the femur towards the body and what action does that entail you might see it in the name here a deduction adduction or a deduction saying a deduction because adduction kind of sounds a little too close to abduction which is the opposite function bringing the muscle or bringing the bone away from the body so think of taking away something you're abducting something that belongs to the body you're taking it away you're moving it further where the opposite function adduction you're adding it to the body you're bringing it closer to the body you're adding it so the most important thing to actually remember about these muscles is that they are all contributors to a deduction the rest is really just nuance so as you might notice all of these muscles originate on the pubic portion of the hip bone so just really quickly we have the iliopubic eminence sort of right there we have the superior ramus of the pubis right here we have the pectineus right here the pubic tubercle the and then the descending ramus or the inferior ramus so the first muscle we're going to talk about is this one and you're going to see that this is called the pectineus actually right there the pectineus and it's called the pectineus because it's actually connected to the pectin of the pubis the pectin connects the pectineus and I believe I mentioned the pectin once before in my video about the hip bone so when you try to think of the muscles of the medial thigh try to think of the pectineus first because it's not only the most superior in origin but it's also the most superior in insertion so it originates on the pectin of the pubis and it inserts over here right below the lesser trochanter the next group of muscles is going to be sort of considered in a group because they have a similar name they're all named the adductors the adductors they are the adductor brevis the adductor longus and then the adductor Magnus. Now the terms brevis and longus, brevis and longus, are terms that you're going to hear again referring to other muscles and they mean pretty much what they sound like. The brevis muscles are typically shorter counterparts to the longus muscles. So the adductors, brevis and longus, both do the same thing. They adduct or adduct, but the brevis muscle is shorter. The brevis muscle is shorter than the longest muscle. So, uh, P, B, L. The way I remember it is, I think presentations can either be brief or they can be long. So, the final adductor, besides the brevis and longest, is another muscle called the adductor magnus. And the way I think of this is that this is the one 
that is massive. It's magnified, it's massive. And what it does is, is it actually sits behind all of the brevis, longus, and also the pectineus. And it actually, unlike those, the adductor magnus actually runs all the way down the length of the femur. And also notice that it actually splits into two, forming this gap right here. And this gap will be very important as a site where arteries pass through. And that gap is called the adductor hiatus. It's a hiatus. It's missing right there. It's taking a hiatus. So if you are actually trying to construct a picture of this group of muscles in your head, I would first draw the femur and then the pubis, the femur connecting to the hip bone. And then I would first draw the adductor magnus. And I'll draw the adductor magnus running all the way down sort of the linear asper and it's like a sort of a hugging on the popliteal surface and then I remember that it splits right here in the adductor hiatus and then after I have a picture of the adductor magnus on my head I would just say okay the pectineus the brevis and the longus actually sit over it so then I would think insofar as remembering them presentations can be brief, they can be long, or they can be massive. So what you're going to find is that in each group of thigh muscles, the anterior, the medial, and the posterior muscles, there's going to be one muscle that connects at the same place for all three. That connects right here on the side of the tibia. Now, in the video about the anterior thigh muscles, we identified that muscle as the sartorius. For the medial thigh muscle, we have the gracilis. The gracilis is the odd man out for the medial thigh muscle. And what all three of these muscles are going to do, we saw it with the sartorius, and now we're seeing it with the gracilis, it's going to flex the knee. We know that has some action on the knee because they all run through and pass the knee joint, but we're going to confirm right now that what they all do is that they flex the knee, they pull it back. Just a quick shout out to the nervous aspect. What's important to remember is that all of these, virtually all of these almost, are innervated by what's called the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve. And the obturator nerve is called thus because it runs through the obturator foramen. The obturator foramen. The only exception is the pectineus muscle, which is innervated by the femoral nerve, the same nerves of the anterior portion. But the rest are all innervated by the obturator nerve. Another thing to sort of note is that although the primary function of these muscles are a deduction, um, they do have some slight other function as well such as the pectineus, you can imagine it pulling this bone forward into a sort of flexion. So this slight hip flexion going on there. And when it comes to the rest of these muscles, the uh, longus, brevis, and magnus, you can imagine it also pulling in a little bit of lateral rotation. So there's some lateral rotation. But just remember guys, Presentations can be brief, long, or massive, but they must always be graceful. I'll see you in the next video.